Hi folks, hope you're having a wonderful day, hope it's going well for you, we are in the middle of the week, we're getting to the middle of the week anyway, it's, it's Tuesday, hope you're having a wonderful day, if you like what I do, the subscribe button is down below, and also, if you're getting any models or anything like that in the next few weeks, head over to Composite Games, use the promo code Northern Exile down below to get yourself 5% off your order at checkout, helps the channel too. Moving on. So, um, as you know, it's a, it's a hectic week. You're going to get sick of me saying it this week, but I need to apologise every video in case you only see one. It's going to be a hectic week, so the videos are going to be a little bit shorter. I did quite well yesterday, in that the video was still around 30 minutes long, so I think it did okay there. Um, but today, we are going to be discussing something that I actually have personal experience of on both sides of the table. And that is, how does Games Workshop treat your local hobby store? This is a question that a lot of people tend to ask me. In that, you know, what's the difference between trade accounts and, you know, like, like a normal Games Workshop store? We'll get into all of those explanations in the video. I've been able to speak to five or six managers uh, of hobby stores, not Games Workshops, but hobby stores. And some uh, people who used to run hobby stores, who are now working for Games Workshop, who are, who are going to talk about uh, their uh, in inbox and, and what goes on with Games Workshop. And, and uh, I've been able to interview them and get some answers from them and boil it down to five or six key key statements or questions about what goes on and why certain hobby stores are struggling. Now, moving on. So, how does Games Workshop treat your local hobby store? So, what you need to get into your head first is the difference between a trade account and a normal Games Workshop store. What we call a trade account is essentially any store that's not Games Workshop that sells Games Workshop products, right? Now, not all of these are created equally, okay? If you if you sell more products, if you're a larger store, you will get more access to Games Workshop than, than you would normally. Um, the big drawback for me, when, when I was actually running a store in, uh, where I, well, near where I live, was you get very little choice. If you're not a big store, you get very little choice what gets sent to you. You, 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 can, you can sort of ask every now and again what you would like given to you as part of your store intake, but most of the time, you get what you're given, and that's it, right? You don't get any sort of choice at all. Which kind of sucks. I'm going to be honest with you, it kind of sucks. Especially when you have a brand new release coming out, and everybody in your store is clamouring for, for this new release, and you get sent three of them, you know. Anyway. So the first thing that, that everybody, everybody said this, when I, whenever I asked the question of any of the managers in the WhatsApp group or on Discord, they all said this. Stock levels are a massive issue. Games Workshop have a tendency to bottleneck stores so that stores have a difficult time accommodating their customers, right? That is something that came up five or six times. And what basically everybody said the exact the same thing, okay? The stock that you're getting in doesn't um, adjudicate the demand. Why is this? I have I have a certain conspiracy theory with this, and it's not that Games Workshop don't don't make as uh, as many as they need to, because we know that's not the case. You know, you know they, they 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 well we know that is the case, um, <clears throat> but it, it is because I think Games Workshop do not want you buying their stock at a lower price than what they sell it for. Okay, so any any product that you buy from Games Workshop, if it's £45 at Games Workshop, it'll be £37.50 or £42.50 at your local hobby store, right? They get it they get it sold to them at a bulk discount and they get to sell it for that for another discount, right? To make sure that they, they're making money and that their customers are actually getting a bit of a saving there. Normally it's around 20%, which is pretty cool, which is it's pretty nice. But Games Workshop don't want you buying that. Okay? This is why the stock numbers that go to these stores are not very large. They're quite small. And once they're gone, they're gone. And the actual store holds their hands up and says, Look, we have no more Lionel Johnsons. We don't have any more. We, we're going we're gonna to put an order for another three. And we'll get those three. But we're not going to be able to get any more. That's because Games Workshop treat you like you're small fry if you are small fry. It just is what it is. And, I, and I'm, this happened to me all of the time. Um, quite thankfully, when I came back from the US, and I, and I was, and even before then, I was working for a bit in a, in, a, in a hobby store here, and I was running a hobby store around my house, and I actually knew people at Games Workshop, so I could I could call up and get different pieces of, of kit and different pieces of of stock. I could even call up other Games Workshop stores 
and have you know them send me the 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 um the stock I could I could stock swap so if they needed something because I had loads of things that I didn't need right if they needed something their like paints anything you know I could, I could give it to them and they'd give me the stock piece that I need and I'd be able to sell it you can do things like that if you know people at Games Workshop they will they will generally do this for you now they're not supposed to do this for you Games Workshop stores are not supposed to support you at all if you are a trade account in fact I'm going to be honest with you, if you're a trade account, and there'll be a lot of people here listening to this, Games Workshop managers kind of see you as the enemy. Uh, <laughs> because you make our jobs much harder. A lot harder. Now, that's, that's through no fault of your own. You're completely allowed to have your own business. You're completely allowed to run it in any way that you see fit. But most Games Workshop managers see you as the enemy. Why? Well, I have an, I have an experience from my own time working with Games Workshop... I was running a, a lovely store. It was going very, 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 very well. And then, in our local uh, mall, essentially, our local shopping centre, a hobby store opened up, which is about 200 yards away from my from my, from my my front door, essentially. Basically, next door. It is now selling... That is now a store selling all of the products I am selling because they got they were a massive store and they got a big... They got a big hand up from Games Workshop, so they got loads of loads of good, good, um, good stock in there. They were selling my stock... For twenty percent off. Now, if you are a parent and you come into my store and you say to me, "Hey, I would like to buy this Dark Empyrean box set," that's nearly a hundred pounds that you're spending on a box set. I, or if you're told, "Hey, there's a shop down the road that sells that same thing for twenty percent off," I'd say, "Thank you very much for getting me into this hobby, Mr. Games Workshop man. I'm going to go buy this for twenty percent off because I am a a responsible person and I have kids. I have bills to pay." Right? If I'm going to save a bit of money, I'm going to save that money. That is not the customer's fault. It was the pe customer's fault sometimes because those customers would come in from the other store and would tell people in my store, hey, don't buy that here. You can buy it there for 20% off. Right? That would really, really, really piss me off. And I, I, I gave out so many warnings of, mate, don't take food out of my mouth, please. Don't do that. Don't be that cheeky. I will ban you from the store. And if you don't see why I would do that, dude, give your head a fucking wobble, right? I've got to put food on the table as well. I've got to keep the lights on at home. And, and if you're coming in telling people to not be at my store because you can go to this other store around the corner and get 20% off, that's not your place. You're being, you're being a dick. You're going out of your way to be a dick. Don't do that, okay? That would happen all of the time. And I swear to God, I swear to God, I can't prove this. And I'll never be able to prove this. But I, I know in my in my bones that that store was sending people to my store to direct people to their door. I, I know that was happening. I just I just know. It, 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 just the way that people were behaving sometimes in the store. Just, I know it was happening. Because independent people can afford to do that. Alright? They, they, they own stores that aren't corporate. So you guys have stores... That are very friendly. Um, I mean, my store is friendly as well, but your store is not corporate. You don't have to toe the corporate line. You can be everybody's best mate, and you can make people feel involved in your store in ways that I can't because my hands are tied by corporate above me, right? So if you then weaponize that friendship to send them to my store to direct people to your store, that's dickhead behavior, and that what I was not the only person that that was happening to. There were a lot of Games Workshop managers who fucking despised trade accounts. Hated them with passion. Said, no, they, they shouldn't even exist. There, there were a lot of Games Workshop managers saying, that, listen, either shut our stores, right, and give us some other job in the company, or don't give your stock to any other stores, apart from Games Workshop stores. That was, the, that was their argument, right? That was the, the main argument that I would hear at Games Workshop. Either close the Games Workshop stores, or make them gaming only, right? Or only sell Games Workshop stock at Games Workshop stores. That's what people are saying. Uh, the other argument on that one was, hey, Games Workshop, we don't stock uh, Wizards of the Coast material. We don't stock Digimon. We don't stock uh, Magic the Gathering. We don't stock World of Darkness or Star Wars Legions or, you know, Bolt Action. We don't, we don't or Hail Caesar. We don't, we don't do any of that in store, right? So why should we expect other stores to carry our products if you want to go your own way then go your own way games workshop stock should only be sold in games workshop stores and um, that was their argument i didn't agree with that i think i think i believe in a free market i believe in everybody being able to buy 
wherever they want to. I believe in the, I believe in the rights of the consumer to do whatever they want, right? Um, but I also believe that you know don't don't be a dick and go above board and try and direct somebody away from one place to go to another when when the manager is standing right in front of you and he needs the store to stay open to keep the lights on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, there were a few people in my store who I really liked, and I would say, to, especially towards the end of my time at Games Workshop, and I would say, listen, man, uh, don't buy it from me. It makes no difference to me anymore. I'm leaving. Um, there's a store down the road. You can get this for 20% off. And, and that was a big drain to me because it was almost like it was like uh, giving yourself morphine, you know what I mean, to kill yourself off because you're in that much pain. That's kind of what I was doing with the store towards the end because I was like, listen, um, Games Workshop, do not give a shit about anybody in my store. They've ruined nearly everything that I've tried to do to make people have a good time in my store. They've every single thing that I've tried, they've sabotaged every single thing that I've I've built. They've they've derided and pulled away from me and, and essentially made me not want to be here anymore in more ways than one. So um, yeah, you should probably go to the other store down the road because like they will give you a, a decent experience. And I'm defeated now. I can't be bothered. So so go and get yourself that discount. And I'll do that all the time with like dark imperiums and, and big box sets and things like that. That was the most heartbreaking thing. One of the most heartbreaking things that I ever had to do at Games Workshop was my final month or two was directing long-term customers to my competition because I couldn't in good faith sell them the, these products that were 20% more expensive than, than you get down the road because my heart wasn't in it anymore. What I used to do was that I used to um, say, you know, that 20% that I, that I charge above is paying for me. That's what you're paying for. You're paying for me to, to throw all of my energy into making sure you have a really good time in the hobby. That's something that a normal trade account manager won't do. He's too busy. I'm not. I run a, game, I run a one man games workshop store, right? So I will throw myself into making sure you have the best hobby experience that you can ever have in my store. That's what you're paying the 20% for. The minute I wasn't providing that, because I was in my final few months and I was just done. It's like I was terminally ill, touch wood, but it was like I was terminally ill or something, like I was just done with it. Then I started sending them, sending them away and saying, no, you, you, you need to go buy that at the other store, you know? But that is why you guys aren't that liked by Games Workshop managers. Uh, it's always a bit of elitism there as well, where, hey, we're Games Workshop and you're not. How dare you? You know, that kind of a thing. Um... But stock levels are a thing. They are a thing that, that and, and there's a very good reason for why they why they do that. They do that because they want you to buy models at full price. There is a very good reason why. Uh, the very big thing that we saw beyond, beyond the price rises for normal customers was that they raised the prices first for people who are who, from trade accounts who are buying stock from Games Workshop, which basically means um, they they were so, so so people who are buying stock from Games Workshop who are trade accounts. We're buying it at a 20% discount. Now they're only getting it at a 15% discount or, or the equivalent of, right? They're not going to eat that cost because they're small businesses. They're now paying more money to buy their stock. They're not going to eat that cost. They're small businesses and their lights, need, their lights need to remain on. What they will do is pass on the cost to the customer, right? And then Games Workshop, a few, a few months down the line when things have calmed down because everyone's really annoyed, that they passed on the blame to the stockist, right? They said, look, we haven't raised the prices. Your local hobby store raised the prices. That's not our fault. It is their fault. It is their fault. They're making that store pay more for their, for their normal stock, right? So then, then that store has to pass on the, the rising prices onto the customer. They just have to to keep the lights on, right? Then, a few months later, Games Workshop raised the prices. So they corner the market, and then they raise the prices. Yeah, they raise all the prices across the board. It's disgusting, it's horrid, but it's what Games Workshop are doing, and those prices will continue to rise until you say you've had enough. And these stock level issues will continue to be there until you say you've had enough. The way you do that is you go and buy third-party models, you go and buy models from other companies, you go and play games from other companies, you put down Games Workshop and you tell them, go fuck yourself. If you've had enough, go elsewhere. You cannot have an opinion saying, you know, Games Workshop are terrible whilst you're getting your wallet out and throwing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds at them. It, that's not how it works, dude. You, you can't sit on the fence both ways. I have not got a model. I, I can... So, so with store credits, I can get pretty much any model I want from, from Composite Games for a decent price, right? I've not had a model, and you can check with them, I've not had a model in nearly a year. Right? I think it's like the Horus Heresy was the last thing I, I got big thing that I got from them. Maybe a, maybe a can of paint here. Some paints there. 
But that's it though. Like I, I just, I've, I've decided to just put my money where my mouth is and go. Nah, I'm not doing this. I'm not supporting that. Like, like I, I can't anymore. Like they, they've gone, they've gone too far for me. And um, there will come a point when it comes to tenth, the gear up to tenth, where I will get a few things. But I'm in, I'm in a very privileged position of being able to not put any money in. And the, the, the store credit that I get is, is directly because you guys are getting good savings from composite games. Um, and I'm supporting a really good uh, small business that have been very good to me. So that I'm in a very privileged place to be able to do that. Um, but you need to vote with your wallet. If you want, want these stock level things to change, you need to vote with your wallet. And that, that's just, that's just the, the be-all, end-all of it. So, um, <clears throat> thank you, by, by the way, to, to, to Kellis, the, the, game, the uh, composite games manager. Because... What he did was, he gave me five sentences, and I don't know how he did this, but he nearly perfectly perfectly and encapsulated everybody's points into what he was saying, without any prompting from me. So I'm going to use them as a little jump-off board, and I'll discuss what everyone's been talking about in WhatsApp groups and on the Discord and all that sort of thing. Anyway, the second point, and once again, I'm going to drink, drink a bit of tea. All right, the second point. Games Workshop favours the bigger stores and allows them to have secondary accounts, which allows them to reserve double the allocation of smaller stores. This was a huge bugbear when I was a stock account manager. I hated this because I ran quite a small store. It was two floors, but it wasn't very big. And my the owner of the store was not a very uh, he wasn't very into Games Workshop. He didn't like them as a company, so we didn't stock very much of them. We sold things like Hail Caesar. We obviously had a very older crowd in that store who would come in and they would, they would play specialist games. Um, we even played games of Inquisitor. It's brilliant. Um, but we did notice that other stores, which are bigger than us, right? They could have their main account, but also several different accounts with Games Workshop, which meant they would get around the stock issue by simply be having access to more accounts. So on their on one trade account, they would say, hey, um, I would like 20 Lionel Johnsons, please. But they know they can sell 60. So on their secondary account, they'll say, I'd like another 20 Lionel Johnsons. And on their third account, they'll say, I'd like another 20 Lionel Johnsons. And they'll be able to get around it that way. There was one store in Manchester, and I know this, right? Because he's on Discord and I speak to him. Anyway, there's one store in Manchester <clears throat> at one stage where they they hired out a venue that was not, you know, in, in the city centre. Three floors of it, stocked it with stock and sold it. Sold it all. That was at the start of the 6th edition. That's what they did. They, they did three store, they did three levels to this store and each level had a trade account. Each level had its own trade account. So you can imagine, like each of those stores is like, oh, I'd like to, I'd like to have, you know, um, fifty. Uh, what, what was it called? Was it Blackreach? Battle of Black Black? I don't know. Maybe it was Blackreach. I don't know. It was Ultramarines and, and Orcs. I think uh, they they say, oh, I'd like fifty of those, and then the next level says, I'd, I'd also like to have fifty of those. And by doing that, you can not only corner the market, you can really, really, really push other stores, you know, out of relevancy. Because if you can, if you can go to a massive store like that, they're not there anymore. I think he sold it and moved on. I think he moved on to, to Durham, of all places, which is really cool. Um, I went to uni at Durham, if you didn't know. But anyway, um, what those big stores do, if you can go to this massive store with a massive community and they're still giving you 20% off of their overhead, or you can go to the small hole-in-the-wall store and they give you 20% off as well, you're going to go to the big store for the bigger experience. Okay. And people will say yeah, capitalism works that way, and yeah, indeed it does, and, but it doesn't always mean... Listen, capitalism works, like fire works. Fire works, it's very warm. But some people like to use it to burn other people's houses down. And that's not cool. That's not cool. You know? I'm a big believer in capitalism, in, in, in how it works. I really am. Like, I think, I think it's like one of the, be the best moves that we actually have uh, as, a, as an economic model. But... It will not stop some people from abusing the system and using that fire that's supposed to warm everybody to burn everybody's houses down. It happens. And Games Workshop and certain hobby stores are big, big, big proponents of doing shit like that, and it really annoys me. Okay. Communication with trade managers, third point. Communication with trade managers can be difficult as there isn't a direct line to your manager. This may be changing as they have just restructured the trade team. Yeah, I don't know anything about restructuring because I'm not there, but I, I do know for a fact that their uh, that their, their trade managers uh, they, they they were they were a special breed. 
<laughs> they were a special breed of people. Um, not that they were lazy or anything like that. These guys were worked to the bone. Like, they were they were looking after... There was, there was one guy, I think, what was his name? Fucking hell, it's doing my head in now. I think it was Tony. Anyway, doesn't matter. It was, it, I, I, I have the, I had the name Ant in my head, but his name was Tony. Oh, Anthony. Fucking hell, idiot. Um, yeah, Tony, anyway. And this guy was looking after around 25 to 30 stores. I'm, I'm not shitting you. Like, this, this guy... This guy would be constantly on the road. He would never be at HQ. Like, I met him once when I first got to HQ and said hello to him, essentially, when, when I, I was getting shown around. And then every single time after that, he was never there. He was always gone. And we'd all say, oh, we'll go for a pint, blah, blah, and we would text and all that, and, you know, he's a really nice bloke. But he was just never around. He was always on the road, always going to stores, always making sure that people were getting the stock that they need. But the sheer amount of people who are falling through the cracks there. This guy can only be in one place at once. Like, he, that's, that's literally who he is. And when you say restructuring, I'm kind of thinking that they've hired more people. Because there would be so many stores that are sitting there going, listen, uh, Lionel Johnson's been out for six weeks and I've had three models. You know, at the end of the day, it does behoove Games Workshop to get those models to stores. They don't, they don't need to have less models than them. They don't need to have no models because they're making no money, right, from you. So there we go. That that, that would be that would be my thing. But um, yeah, for me, getting in touch with with the with the trade managers. So trade managers basically what they do is they look after trade accounts. So if you have any sort of issues or you have any stock level issues or you have anything like that, you call up your trade manager and you get it squared away. Some people have more success getting in touch with them than others. The only time I really spoke to Tony afterwards was when he was my trade manager when I finished at Games Workshop and went to work for a local store, right? So, lovely guy. He never got out to the store to see me, but every single time, again, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Every single time I had an issue, I was able to call his mobile or text him and say, listen, mate, can you add these things to my order for next week? You know, I just need these, I'm going to sell them, or I promised the customer that I want to sell them. And they would send them to me. Without that direct line, though, without that direct line, we would have been scuppered. We would have been scuppered. In fact, I think the, the very notion that, that the, the, my, my, the owner of that store was gutted that I went off to become a teacher. The reason why, he actually tried to up my pay to keep me there. And I swear to God, it was mostly for that relationship with Tony. For being able to get what we wanted when we, when we needed it. You know, he wasn't a big games workshop person, but it did make up like 40% of his income. You know, that's how big Games Workshop are. Uh, but anyway, I agree with that, totally. Alright, number four. It needs to be said that Games Workshop are quick to sort things out if an item arrives or is reported faulty by a customer. Yes, indeed. This is something that has gone on for 20, 30 years, I would say, in, at Games Workshop. I, I, I've heard about this for a long, long, long time. Um, that Games Workshop will sort out your model, no problem, no questions asked. If you if you say, listen, this came you know, broken, most of the time they won't ask for proof, they'll just send you another one. Why? Because the models, and um, hold on to your hats, hold on to your hats, the models are fucking worthless. Yeah. The models have no worth to Games Workshop whatsoever. They don't give a shit. If it would keep you coming back and buying more models, they would send you 10 of that model. They could easily do that. They, they wouldn't care. This is why the stock levels, the stock level issue, whenever somebody says to me, oh, it, it's a technical issue, it, it, you know, you've got to give them a break. No, no, I won't. No, I won't give them a break. I will not give them a break because these models are, are worthless to them. They would give them away if it meant you came back. Because they do. I know several people who have said, hey, my Abaddon's missing a sword. Well, they, know, they know it's not true, but they send you one anyway. They send you one anyway to keep you, keep you sweet, keep you coming back. Right? It's an easy way to get a win. It's an easy way to get good press. Say, hey, uh, my Titan was missing like a shield on its thing, and they sent me one within a, within a week or two. That's great. That's great. It's no skin off their nose because models are completely fucking worthless to them. They have no no financial worth. Okay, now of course these are pieces of plastic that they've made. 
no problem. And the moulds cost money, no problem. Manufacturing process costs money, no problem. But the models themselves, they can knock them out and send them to you so easily. It's literally no skin off their nose. It really isn't. It really isn't. You know? I, I know that the stock levels shouldn't be as they are. Because I'm going to say that famous story again that I keep saying, right? I'm standing in Games Workshop with my trainer. And he's standing there. And we're going over training and uh, health and safety training, things like that. And I say to him, look, um, shoplifting. He goes, oh, yes, yes, we need to talk about that. I said, okay. And we went over different signs of shoplifters, you know, you know how, how, I can, how, how I can recognize it. And I said, well, well, what if I see someone running out the running out the store with a box set? Do I, like an expensive box set? Do I chase them? Do I get, and, he, 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 and he went white. He was like, no. No, you don't chase someone. Don't, what are you doing? No. Listen. He picks up this box of, of, of Primaris Marines and he says, what do you think is more expensive, the box or the models inside? I went, uh, what, to Games Workshop? Yeah, but the models inside. No, no. When we insure these boxes, most of the insurance is the box, not the models inside, because the models inside are worthless. Genuinely worthless. We could make thousands of them. We do make thousands of them every single day, right? We'll just churn out another set. It doesn't matter. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a mass-produced hobby. That's what we do, right? This isn't a computer chip that they're getting away with. It's molded plastic, and it's molded grey plastic at, at that. So you know, it's, it's not even. Just let them get away with it, dude. No one cares. No one cares. One, we're fully insured, and two, most of our insurance claims don't get processed because it's not worth it. It's not worth chasing it up. We'd rather keep our premiums. It's not worth keep, not worth chasing it up. Yeah, so you tell me whether a company who treats, their, who treats their models like that really have stock level issues? No, they don't. No, they don't. If they wanted to, they could supply everybody in this hobby with the Lionel Johnson model if they wanted to. Everybody who wants one. And another, and another couple of thousand people who, 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 were, who were on the fence, they could supply them as well. I'm telling you now. Absolutely telling you now. Stock levels are manufactured, they're not real. They're not stock level problems. Sorry, are manufactured. They're not real. They're not real. No one could ever convince me that they're real. Not, not from what I've seen. Absolutely not. They, they are. They are. Um, how do I put it? Sophisticated and shall we say um, fabricated issues. You know, Games Workshop create an issue and then they charge you for the solution. That's what they're doing. Okay, it's kind of like electronic arts or something. Um, taking away something like, 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 say from Skyrim, say if they said, say if they brought out Skyrim, and they didn't make Skyrim, but so, let, let, let's say Bethesda brought out Skyrim, right? Right, cool. But the Skyrim hasn't been released yet. Then Bethesda released Skyrim, and they released Skyrim without the ability to hold a sword. You can only hold a bow. And everyone's like, well, that, that sucks. I want to be a Viking. I want to be a Nordic hero. I don't want to be a bowman. I don't want to be this, this beta male. I want, I want a sword. I think, oh, yeah. Yeah, that is a problem. Okay, we'll bring out a DLC uh, called Swordsman, and you can you can become a swordsman. Cool. Ten ninety nine, please. Most people buy it. Most people buy it because they've created a problem, and then they've sold you the solution. That's exactly what Games Workshop are doing. They are creating a problem in their stock levels, and they are charging you through the nose for a solution to go and get those models as soon as they come out. Right? As soon as they come out. That not only that, they can make sure that they know exactly what they're selling, when they're selling it. Their their overheads and their premiums become very, very manageable. They know exactly what they're selling and when. So they can say to their investors, Ah, we know we're going to sell this many models. And we know we're always right. Because we always sell that exact amount of models. Right? Not just that, but the main reason that they do it is to make sure that their models, they can never, ever, ever, ever have a sale. The reason why Games Workshop will never, ever, ever have a sale is because if they did that, then their products will be very much like every other product on the, on the shelf of a, sh of a shop, right? The thing that, that really stands Games Workshop out from places like um, Warlord Games and all and Mantic and all these other places is that there aren't any sales. These are, these are top-of-the-line, bespoke hobby products. That's exactly what they want to sell. They, it's, it's in the mission statement. We want to sell. We want to make the best, the best wargaming models in the world, and we want to continue doing this forever. Well, 
If that's your business statement, the way to, way to keep doing that is to keep making money year on year on year on year on year and never do a sale because your products are the best, quote unquote, right? Yeah. The stock levels, the, li the issues with them are not real. They are manufactured just like the models are. All right. Fifth and final point. However, these, these managers, these trade managers, they can be inconsistent with the resolutions they offer, which can be frustrating for us and our customers. Now, I know for a fact, for a fact, that, that uh, composite games aren't, aren't the biggest store. They're not the smallest store, but they're not the biggest store either, right? Um, they're, 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 they're very hardworking people who've built this thing from basically nothing into being something really cool. And they might be in the chat now, so say hello to them if they are in chat, because they're, they're, they're very nice people. Um, I, know for, I also know for a fact they will not be getting treated the same way as a big retailer from, say, Manchester or Liverpool or Glasgow or Newcastle or Birmingham or London. They will not be getting treated in the same way. If you have a problem at a large retailer that does wargaming supplies with Games Workshop products, they will, sell you, they will send you a replacement to your house or the store within a couple of days. I know this because I've seen it happen. Because Games Workshop stores are on the same band. We're on the same priority band. So if you go to a Games Workshop store, like mine, like what I used to run, right? And you come to me and you say, you say, North, you know, this Angron only has one wing. I say, oh, shit. I wouldn't ask you because I don't care. I'd be like, oh, I'll, give me, I'll make a phone call. One second. I make a phone call. I give them your, 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 your barcode, your, 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 your receipt number. I say, yeah, this has got, um, this is a, a, an Angron with one, with one wing, blah, blah. They say, right, we'll send another one out with your next order. If this is a Tuesday and my next order is a Thursday, guess what? You've got a brand new Angron for free on Thursday. That would happen all of the time because they don't give a shit. And we are on the, the highest band of replacements. We're right there with massive independent retailers like in Liverpool and Chester and, and uh, Manchester and all these other cities, right? We're right there with them. So we get it very, we get it first and, and very, very, very quickly. But I also know when I was running my other store, whenever Tony wasn't there, it could be months before I saw a replacement for a faulty product that a customer got, which is even worse when I know that that, that, that customer is telling the truth. Because nine times out of ten, they are. Nine times out of ten, these people aren't out to swindle you because they think they're going to get caught. They don't know how easy it is to get free stock in Games Workshop, right? So they would go in and they'd say, hey... Um, yeah, like, you know, my, my Angron's got, got one leg. I'm like, oh, shit. I'm sorry about that, man. Um, I'll call him and I'll, I'll get it all set up. And I'd call him and i say, yeah, it should be in your next order. The next order would come. No Angron model. Uh, excuse me, yeah, you're going to send me a, an Angron. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, it'll be in the next one. We had, we had a stock issue. Uh-huh, okay. Next order, no Angron. Let me guess, stock issue? Yeah, there was stock issue. Okay, fair enough. And about a month later, it'll come. So he gets his free Angron replacement in the end. And he gets lots of bits and things like that. But you are on the bottom rung. You're on the bottom ladder of the priority that Games Workshop set you on. And uh, the only way you get up that ladder is by making your business bigger. But the thing is, no one's going to make your business bigger if their replacement models for faulty models don't come for months. You are no longer a trusted supplier. Customer trust is essential in a hobby that costs so much money. And if Games Workshop erodes yours for you... Dude, seriously? Yeah. So that's generally how Games Workshop treat your local hobby stores. Those are the main issues that we've all that we've all come across. And again, thank you to Composite Games for, for sending the for sending those five because they pretty much umbrellaed all of the other issues that that had been talked about in the Discord and on WhatsApp groups and all sorts. So um thank you to them. And yeah, this is where we are. This is where we are right now. If you if you've ever wondered why, you know. Uh, certain trade accounts, certain hobby stores seem to not like like Games Workshop very much. Now you've got some sort of a, of an idea of how things work and how things go for them. So make sure that if you have a small hobby store that treat you right, that, that give you you know <clears throat> exactly what you want when you want, and they're always there for you. Make sure you support them with your custom. We need these people to to still have stores because without those stores, there isn't there is there's no hobby. I don't want this hobby to be a mail order hobby, right? I want people to be able to talk to each other and actually play games with each other. And actually have a social space to go and go and sit down and, and paint the models and buy stuff and, and celebrate what we do, right? 
I love this part in the video, by the way, with the guy just dangling there. It's just hilarious. Um, so, go and support your local store. Go and support your local managers. And even if it's Games Workshop, go and support their, those local managers. But if you've had enough of these stock issues, you know what to do. Vote with your wallet. Continue buying from your independent stores, but buy another game. Right? If you fancy that, that Skyrim skirmish game, go and buy that. If you fancy Star Wars Legion, go and buy that. Give that a go, right? Give something else a go for a little while. And I swear to God, if, if nearly everybody who got pissed off at Kings World Cup did this, they would book their ideas up within a couple of days. Because, because they, they could do. This is not an issue that, that needs wide-scale reform within the company. No, 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 no. I'm telling you now. I'm telling you now. You hit them in the wallet, this will change overnight. This change over... It's, it's like that thing when they say, you know... If everybody, if everybody in the world gave a pound, you know, global hunger would be gone. You know, or whatever, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's one of them. Anyway, love you all a long time. I'll speak to you soon. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And I'll see you later. Have a good one. Bye.